New details have emerged after nine members of one family are murdered in Mexico. How the family worked to protect themselves after previous run-ins with cartels. Plus, why federal agents raided two East County homes, among others, creating quite a stir for neighbors. And a military member is stripped of his guns after threatening suicide and being placed on a mental health hold. How he used a loophole to get his guns back, even though deputies believed he was a danger to the community. Delso. Breaking news, we are in the 10 News Live Center and we're, look, we're following a shooting that happened in Otay Mesa. Take a look, this is the church's chicken over at Del Sol Boulevard. We actually have Sky 10 overhead right now with several police cars in the area. We have confirmed by police that three people were shot at around 530. This is near Picador Boulevard in Otay Mesa, according to San Diego police. Now, an employee may have been wounded in the gunfire, according to a dispatcher, but we do not have that confirmed by police yet. As you come back and look at our map, you can kind of see it's in the area near the 805 and the 905 right in here in this area you can see there is street closures from what we could see from the sky 10 video and we do have a crew heading that way and we'll have more for you as soon as we have it reporting in the live center cassie carlisle 10 news cassie thank you all right for the first time we are seeing these new images of the horrific scene family members arrived to in mexico this is after three mothers and six children were gunned down in a brutal attack. Five other children are recovering in an Arizona hospital. Two of them could be released as early as today. Tennis reporter Mimi Alcala is along the border and authorities are trying to figure out if this family was caught up in the crossfire of rival drug cartels. Mimi. And Kim, Steve, the details in this case just continue to change. Right now, the big question for authorities is, was this family targeted? Were they caught in the crossfire? Or was this, in fact, a case of mistaken identity? What they went through, what they experienced, I don't, we don't have the capacity just to uh, imagine what these children went through. And now, through these pictures, we're getting a glimpse at the violence the LeBaron and Langford family went through as they were brutally murdered near Sonora and Chihuahua, Mexico. They were ambushed and shot while riding in three separate vehicles. Three mothers and six children were killed. Loved ones now demanding answers as the mystery into who did this and why remains. We're calling on our governments and our sovereign countries to help us and provide answers. These, uh, these kinds of injustices and, and atrocities should, should never be. San Diegans who knew members of the family tell us they were a fundamentalist Mormon group unrelated to the mainstream LDS church. They settled in Mexico decades ago, but were dual citizens of the U.S. and Mexico. According to our source, family members would visit San Diego's temple about 30 years ago and even considered moving back to the U.S. and rejoining the church. The victims lived in a very remote area of Mexico, a region known for cartel violence. The LeBaron family says they've had run-ins with the cartels before and had set up a system to protect themselves. At a press conference, Mexico's Secretary of Security said the guns used to kill the family were made in the U.S. More than 200 bullets were found at the crime scene. And Tuesday, Mexican officials announced that they arrested someone possibly related to the murders, but today they updated that saying he was not involved. We're going to continue following this and bringing you any new developments. For now, we're live along the border. Mimi Alcala, 10 News. A tragic mystery, Mimi. Thank you. And federal agents raided two East County homes this morning as part of a money laundering investigation. Homeland Security investigators spent all morning at an El Cajon home on Vista Hermosa. Neighbors say they showed up about 7 a.m. with guns drawn and made several announcements over a loudspeaker for the people inside to come out. When that didn't happen, they went in. Then the next thing we heard a big boom which made me hit the floor. I watched too much news, I guess. It sounded like a concussion bomb or something, but it was, uh, it was extremely loud. Homeland Security agents with armored vehicles descended on a home in the Steel Canyon Estates community in Hamul at about the same time. DHS said that it executed four search warrants in San Diego County, one in L.A. County today. So far, no one has been arrested. And tonight, concerns about whether the difference between federal and state mental health reporting is creating a danger in the community. Team 10 uncovered what some describe as a 
firearm loophole involving active duty members of the military. Our investigator Adam Rakuzin joins us now with what he's discovered in this case. Yeah, and we discovered this about a year ago and going back that far. And then in June, we discovered that a court case where the San Diego County Sheriff's Department was trying to take personal guns away from a member of the military who they believe was a danger to himself. Since he's a member of the military, we wanted to know why this was playing out in a San Diego County court. Sitting in front of a judge, this U.S. Navy sailor pleaded his case on why his gun seized by the San Diego County Sheriff's Department should be returned to him. We're not naming him because he was never accused of any crime. The hospital corpsman second class told the judge San Diego County Sheriff's Department got it wrong. He's not a danger to himself or others. Let's back up really quick on how we got here. In May, the Sheriff's Department responded to a 911 call about a guy with a gun in a bathroom trying to kill himself. That's the sailor who was in court. In court paperwork, the Sheriff's deputy described how he allegedly told him he drank two alcoholic drinks and laid in a bathtub full of water. Deputies say he told him he thought he would pass out and drown. When that didn't happen, the deputy wrote the sailor said he was going to have law enforcement shoot him when they arrived. It didn't work out like that. Instead, deputies placed him on a 72-hour mental health hold. If an active duty member lives within a sheriff's jurisdiction outside of a base, then they are uh, responsible to obey the laws of the state of California. We've hidden the identity of this member of the San Diego County Sheriff's Department because he works undercover. One of his jobs is to handle gun violence restraining orders, or GVROs for short. It's a way law enforcement can use the civil courts to take someone's guns away. If we have the ability to demonstrate that this person could be a danger to himself or others, we could use uh, GVROs to proactively prevent him from being in possession of firearms. The Sheriff's Department filed a petition for a gun violence restraining order against the Navy sailor after releasing him to staff at Balboa Naval Hospital in San Diego. According to the Sheriff's Department interpretation, the California and DOD procedures for requiring someone to undergo a mandatory mental health evaluation are different. In their petition, the Sheriff's deputy wrote, Active duty military members placed on involuntary mental health holds at federal military treatment facilities are governed by the requirements of the Department of Defense. They claim the DOD standards do not translate into California's 5150 and related statutory requirements. Those are California's mental health evaluation and treatment laws. The petition said it's not currently possible to use California's electronic mental health reporting system for an active duty member placed on a hold under DOD standards. What do you see a danger in somebody having a weapon that shouldn't? Well, if a person is exhibiting the the signs of being a danger to themselves or others, of course, uh, firearm just uh, amplifies their ability to, to do harm. In California, if you're taken in on a 5150 and admitted to a mental health facility, state law makes it unlawful to possess firearms for a period of time. That information is reported to the California Department of Justice. Experts 10 News spoke would say things work differently if an active duty member of the military is taken to a federal facility. The reporting system on the federal side is a lot different than we have in our law enforcement here on the state level. Vic Monder is a San Diego based attorney. He handles civilian and military cases. Monder says just because someone is placed on a 72 hour hold and taken to a DOD facility doesn't mean federal authorities have the authority to permanently remove someone's firearms. There needs to be due process. In order to take away someone's federal rights to a firearm, that person must have been adjudicated where they've committed a crime or they've been found guilty to have committed some sort of act that warrants that individual to be, um, be have their gun rights being taken away. The sailor was eventually released from Balboa and told the judge he was never admitted. In his case, the judge ruled he can keep his guns. The sailor wouldn't comment outside of court and didn't answer the door when we showed up to ask him about it. And the San Diego City Attorney's Office tells us they are aware of four gun violence restraining orders involving active duty military members. California's GVRO law does not extend to military personnel when they are on federal land or installations. And this is just one piece to the puzzle. Tomorrow night, hear from a former NCIS agent turned whistleblower. Adam Rakusen, Team 10.
And in the 10 News Live Center, we're continuing to follow that breaking news over in Otay Mesa. You can see that church is chicken there, surrounded by police officers. No roads are closed as from what we can see. But what we do know right now is that three people have been shot and transported to local hospitals. According to witnesses, a man walked in and shot three people. Now, just to give you an idea of where this is at, as you can see this map right here, it's Del Sol Boulevard near Picadero Boulevard. So as I zoom out, you can kind of see that it's near the 805 and it's a little bit north of that freeway right there, Otay Mesa Freeway. So that is the area that we're talking about. Uh, lots of police activity and we're working to find out how those patients are. And we do have a um, we do have a crew on the way there. I think we wanted to look back at the 10 News Sky 10 shot right there. Um, it looks like they are continuing to investigate. They do not have any information on a suspect. There is no suspect in custody. So as of right now, they are continuing to look for that person, that shooter. Again, we are here in the 10 News Live Center, and we'll keep you up to date as soon as we have more information. We will await on that, Cassie. Thank you. Police arrested the man who they say punched a San Diego police officer in the face in the gas lamp quarter while dressed as Jesus. This happened on Halloween. Police say this surveillance video shows the attack. Now, they say the man in the video is Eric Van Fleet. He was the one dressed as Jesus, and that the officer he punched was just trying to break up a fight. Van Vliet was arrested in Idaho this morning. He will soon be brought back to San Diego. The officer who was punched went to the hospital and got five stitches.